The common perception is that human trafficking only happens in other countries, but little do they know that it has been happening right here. On March 4, 2017, we attended an event called Hope for Human Trafficking. There we spoke with Indy Star columnist Tim Swearens about his article that touched on the issue. This is a business and it's important to understand that. And there's a tremendous demand to buy children for sex. They only see a portion of what's actually going on in the sex trade. It's, it's a hidden industry, it's a hidden business. And it's hard to get behind those barriers and to fully see the extent of the trade. It's something that takes place in secret, and obviously there's a vested interest both from the buyers and the sellers to hide what's going on. The research is showing that the average child victim is 15 years old. The hardest thing about the Hamilton County article on, on the sex trade locally was that just the age of the victims. The U.S. Department of Justice study that came out last year identified about 10,000 youth victims between 13 and age 17 in the United States each year, and they're sold on average 5.4 times a day. That's a tremendous demand for teenagers, for children in our culture. After the event, we were lucky enough to speak with a brave survivor of human trafficking, and here she tells her story. When I was uh, 17, I was in foster care. I came out at the age of 18. When I came out, there was nowhere to go. When you're 18, you're considered an adult. You're on your own. I had no family. I had no friends. My father was in prison for 29 years for murder in Puerto Rico. My mother was uh, diagnosed bipolar, manic, depressant schizophrenic and my grandmother had just had a stroke. I ended up going and sleeping in the back seat of an abandoned car um, at my friend's house and I partied and drank and smoked every day because I didn't want to know what I had to do with myself. I didn't know what to do and a friend of mine was like after three months he was like man it's about to be winter. Dude what are you gonna do? You need a job. I was like a job. I ain't never had a job. <laughs> So, I ended up finding a place that was hiring for what I thought was waitresses and I walked in, it was a strip club. And they wanted me to come back the next day with a bathing suit and some heels. And I worked that industry for five years. That industry took me down a path of drugs, cocaine, alcohol, prostitution. And I learned how to hustle and smile and sell sex to the highest bidder inside the club. And I was made to feel like that was in one's life. That's kind of where it began. I'm trying to tell everybody about it. Back in the day, we'd have been like, you a snitch. Okay, well, when I was in the club the first five years, I came out for 12, I got married. After that, marriage fell apart. I went back for seven years. And when I went back into the club, I said to myself, I'm going back in as a veteran. I'm going back in as a girl who ain't gonna get tricked, as a girl who knows what's happening, and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make money. And within two years, I was back in prostitution, and I was back doing cocaine, and I was back where I started. I have realized that you can be in an industry so long that the victim does become the predator. I got to a place where I said, oh, okay, I can make money off these girls. You don't need a pimp, let me be your friend. I know somebody who needs, you know, you need $300? He, he just wants to have sex with you for $300. i will go with you, I'll be there with you for the whole process. Don't worry about it. I'll walk you through it. I'll be there for you. And when I started to get to a place where people were going, wow, Heather, you can make money off these girls. I started to understand that the victim does become the predator and I needed help. I didn't want to ruin no one's life. I got to a place where I felt sorry for them. It pricked my heart, you know? I didn't want to do that. Business. 
I've talked to therapists here in, in Indiana who say they work with 14 and 15 year old girls who are sold 50 times in a week. You multiply 50 times times 10 weeks or 12 weeks or 20 weeks, you start to get very big numbers. I think, I think one of the big areas that we need to grow in and, and learn about is, is the need to take the buyers seriously and understand the damage that they're doing. We still culturally have an attitude that men will be men, that this is the world's oldest profession and there's not a lot that we can, can do about it. I, I don't think that's true. I think we can begin to reduce the man if, if we step in the penalties and if we begin to understand the society. But unfortunately, what people don't understand is the amount of damage that's done to the victims. And we're talking about physical and emotional uh, damage, and that emotional damage it can take years, if not decades, to recover from. Restored Incorporated is an organization offering recovery relief to human trafficking victims in central Indiana. They work with law enforcement to identify trafficking victims and offer these victims therapy through each of their healing processes and ongoing case management. Hi, my name is Whitney Weir. I'm a victim advocate at Restored and our founder started doing this work just as she um, was a social worker and was learning more about human trafficking and how it doesn't just happen around the world, but it's happening here in Indiana. So our goal is just to make sure that there are services and the best possible services for victims here in Indiana. I am here today to let everyone know as much as I can. I'm here to expose everything. I'm here to tell my story. We have to raise awareness. It's like a tree with many branches. Sex addiction is real, just like drug addiction. And I think the more we get the resources out there to the public and to the justice system, letting them know that we're here to help, the information has to be available when a victim asks, what can I do? Someone needs to have that answer. As the fastest growing crime in the world, there is still hope for the future and the fight against human trafficking has just begun.